Dear friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Biozy Classes. So today, we are going to discuss about one more very important bacterial disease, that is pneumonia. Before that, let me remind you, in the previous classes, we have discussed about one more very important bacterial disease, that is typhoid. Here, particularly today, when I am talking about pneumonia, pneumonia can be caused by bacteria, it can be caused by virus, or even for that matter, fungi or any other parasites. What I mean here is, I am not going to concentrate on the other types of microbes, only I am going to tell you about the bacterial pneumonia, so more specifically. So dear friends, now as we all know what exactly is pneumonia. Pneumonia is an infection resulting in the inflammation of the lungs. Inflammation of the lungs. So when I say inflammation, it means to say that it's any physical condition in the body, a localized region in the body which in fact causes redness, swelling and even in some cases painful irritation may also exist. So anyway, so that is inflammation. So inflammation of the lungs rather we refer that to as what? Pneumonia. So further my dear friends, See, when we take into consideration the incidence of this disease, particularly uh, affects in the age groups of what I can say, children below the age of 5 years or even what I can say, uh, the children below what I can say, 10 years or the elders above 65 years. So, these age groups are more susceptible to the disease called pneumonia. So, further, what happens here, basically let me tell you, see, when the lungs become inflamed. The oxygen carrying capacity by what I can say the what I can say the blood will be in fact decreased because there is no supply of oxygen from the lungs. So anyway, that's one point. Now let me tell you. See, let us say for example here. We have. Here, so lungs uh, rough structure. So here, particularly, you can say inflammation in any one part of the lung. So this is about what I can say the introductory points about pneumonia. Further, let me also tell you that today we are going to also see about the epidemiology. Okay, what do you mean by the epidemiology? So, it's a, what I can say, medical term where the incidence, distribution and possible control of the disease is discussed. Alongside that, I am also going to tell you the causative agents and the transmission, the diagnosis and symptoms Further, as usual, the prevention and treatment methods of the disease pneumonia. So now, we are going to discuss about the epidemiology of the disease pneumonia. Okay friends, here coming to the epidemiology again, let me tell you now, this pneumonia disease causes 450 million infections among people throughout the year. And among this, around 4 million people are fatalities. I mean to say, it results in death of 4 million people. Further moving ahead, this uh, pneumonia Incidence, as I said you before, is uh, you know more with respect to the children below the age of five and higher with respect to the people above 65 years. This disease is more what I can say found in the developing nations than the developed ones. See, when you take into the consideration the death rate, 
So total death rate in a year by the diseases, you know, when we consider 7% of the deaths only occur because of pneumonia. So which are which is a very high you know percentage. Further, let me tell you before the discovery of antibiotics in the year 1930, pneumonia was the disease which was in fact uh, causing more deaths. Since now it has become you know treatable, yet it remains a public health concern. So next, my dear friends, we are going to discuss about the causative agents and transmission of the disease. Here mainly the disease is caused by bacteria. Under this, you have to remember the most important strain which causes more than 50% of community acquired pneumonia is Streptococcus pneumoniae. So, other than this bacteria, we also have few more, the Diplococcus pneumoniae, we also have Haemophilus influenzae, so these are the common ones, other than Streptococcus, we have Diplococcus and Haemophilus which cause, what I can say, pneumonia. So, we also have Staphylococcus aureus, and Mycoplasma pneumoniae, whose in incidences are generally same. So, this is with respect to the, what I can say, causative agents, which can generally cause this disease. Further moving ahead, let me also tell you how this disease is transmitted. So, in a more easiest way possible, I can tell you, so the infected person's droplets, when inhaled by a healthy person, he may stand a chance of getting contracted by this disease. Or even by the use of utensils of the infected person or any other uh, you know, glasses or any other uh, items used by the infected person, when it, it is continuously used by the healthy person, definitely they may stand a chance of getting this disease. So, this is about the positive agents and their transmission. So, further moving ahead, my dear friends, I am going to tell you about the symptoms of this disease. Dear friends, the bacterial pneumonia develops very quickly and typically causes high fever and chills. Along with this, we can also find cough. See, it is dry at first, but later it produces sputum or phlegm. So, chest pain can also be associated with this disease. Further, we have vomiting sensations called nausea together with vomitings. Shortness of breath. Muscle aches. So, these are the common symptoms which are associated with the disease. Further, we have you know, severe cases wherein we can find blood in the sputum. So, on the other hand, along with this, nail beds and blue lips can also be seen. So, nail beds and blue lips, they are discoloration, you know, which can be found under the nails and discoloration of the lips respectively. Blue lips can also be referred in scientific terms as cyanosis. So, I hope you understood. So, these are in severe cases. Whereas, these are the general symptoms associated with the disease. 
So the severe cases will have these symptoms along with this. So that to be noted. So next we are going to discuss about the diagnosis of the disease. Friends, as we all know that due to excessive secretion of fluid in the airways, there are special sounds which can be heard with the use of stethoscope, that is crackles. So these are high pitched, discontinuous and popping sounds heard in the lungs. So which instrument I as I said here, you please remember stethoscope. So this is one way of diagnosis and uh, please, uh, I mean watch the video, uh, I would have attached the crackles uh, sound so that you will be well familiar how this uh, sound would be uh, under uh, what I can say, the chest by use, with the use of stethoscope. Secondly, with the help of chest X-ray. So, this uses the strong uh, ionizing radiation to generate the images of the chest. Further, physical signs and symptoms can also help in diagnosis of this disease. So, I need to mention here that a well experienced doctor just by seeing these uh, signs and symptoms, definitely he can say a person may have uh, you know, uh, chances of what I can say, pneumonia. So these are the important, what I can say, generally used the diagnostic tools uh, for the disease. Next, I am going to tell you about the prevention of the disease. So here, dear friends, please note that first important aspect here we need to consider compulsorily not only with respect to this disease but with respect to all the diseases. You need to be hygienic. So good healthy hygienic practices Okay. Secondly, we have, you know healthy environmental measures so here uh, you know the garbage pile up you know the water treatment and uh, you know uh, the laying of roads you know when done it should be very proper so that potholes are avoided you know the municipalities and corporations you know should involve more in giving the healthy environment for us to live together with that we also are responsible for maintaining uh, you know a good uh, healthy environment so along with this most important one you know vaccinations should be considered at early age with uh, you know respect to the other non-infectious uh, what I can say pneumonia you no know, the overuse of alcohol should be avoided overuse of alcohol should be avoided and generally you know people who use you know recreational drugs often are also having chance of you know contracting the disease all right so these are all non-infectious but still needs to be avoided so this is also one and further you know alongside this all the other measures you know of uh, washing hands regularly 
you know, bathing regularly, avoiding uh, you know, contact with the infected people can definitely help us in the prevention of this disease. So finally, I am going to tell you about the treatment of this disease. So here, the preferred choice of treatment is by the use of antibiotics. Dear friends, let me tell you, even here, the children and the adults, you know, generally go for the antibiotics microlites. So here, what are these microlites? These are the antibiotics which uh, in fact uh, inhibit the bacterial translation or bacterial protein synthesis together with you know they are effective against gram positive bacteria so anyway so that's why you know they generally use macrolides okay to give a few examples here azithromycin and clarithromycin Macrolides are generally used. Since you know, uh, we all know penicillin was used before to treat pneumonia. Yes, indeed. Today also penicillin uh, remains the drug of choice. But what happened is today, especially Streptococcus pneumoniae have become resistant to this antibiotic and also to many other antibiotics. So, for that only, you know, for a reason, we consider other antibiotics for the treatment of this disease. So, my dear friends, please go through all the important aspects which you have discussed in the class, starting from the epidemiology till the treatment, note down the important points. And further, I request everyone to keep, uh, you know, uh, updating yourself for more videos. Subscribe, like, share and support uh, to the, you know, BioZ classes. Thank you very much.